or welcome back to the tube, the program that distorts the facts and also often distorts my face. Paula, is there, Paula, is there any truth in the rumour that you and Bob um, recently uh, had uh, a uh, shag? I actually can't comment on that, but he does have a new single out. That's very nice. Yes. Sir. And so we took this opportunity, asked by Paula, to go and visit I him. I didn't ask by me. To go and visit him in the countryside, which I did, and here I am doing that. Brown nosing. Well, I think we should go back and begin with those early humble years. Yes. Those, those humble I'm... years when you were a mere nobody. And I, I've, in your book, you, you have a lot of jobs. Have sex because we're about to see in excess doing listen like thieves but then there is my Michael Hutchins interview which I feel was one of the pinnacles of my career on the tube mainly because I mainly interview Michael's crotch and at the end of it he asked me back to his hotel room and I said I'm sorry Michael I've got a baby who I never could place Michael Hutchins but I'll be able to see He's him the now. sexiest man on earth bed again with our favorite girl in the whole world <laughs> pops answer to grace kelly it's kylie minogue now how are you kylie great thank you did you have any new year's resolutions i always have new year's resolutions like what? which uh oh you know to be good to be kind to be generous to be on time <laughs> to uh things like that be prompt um change my terrible ways and habits but that lasts probably a few days were you a teenage rebel uh, when I was about 14, 15, a little bit, yeah. I, I think I always wanted to be more than I was. I kind of pretended to be tough and be in with the gang and all of that, but really I was a bit nervous about getting caught. <laughs> really thought I should be good. Now, we were just talking about the delinquents. You had to take your clothes off. Is that sort I of awful? very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> with everyone with their eyes shut. No, that, was, that, was, that, was that awful? Um, not or really. Or very mean, uninhibited? No, I didn't take all my clothes off anyway. My, I took my top off. Um, and in the actual film, if you blinked very quickly, you would miss it. Is it true you had an affair with Prince? Uh, no, I didn't have Now, I know Molly Meldrum very well. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you know, Molly Meldrum has a big mouth. <laughs> and he did lead me to believe that there could have been uh, real, true, <laughs> heart-stopping romance there. Um... Well, let's just say I met Prince a few times when he was here, and <laughs> I love these. <laughs> that, that's my meaningful. Yeah, you can relax like, with me first. Yeah, <laughs> great. Look into my eyes. Pretend there's a complete crew around us. Um, no, Prince is, has been a, Did an you idol him? of mine. No. Oh, come on. No, it's I've... true. <laughs> God, dearie me. Not even try a little bit. Try another angle. So yeah, I can't think way. of another one. Good. I feel a bit tired <laughs> and it's early and I'm trying to think, how could I word that more sensitively? <laughs> uh, do you think you'll be working with him then? <laughs> 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 That's taken a step backwards. Um, I don't know, maybe. I hope yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> very I'm very sad, I'm very sad that you won't tell me more because you've actually kissed some of all the men that I really want to kiss. You know, <laughs> so I actually was planning to just switch off the lights and tell the cameras to go out. Really? Yeah, and we could just discuss it yeah. alone, seeing you're not <laughs> going to discuss it on camera. Um, do, you have, um, do you have a boyfriend at the moment? No. No? No. So you're available, sort of, for, for bar mitzvahs <laughs> and weddings. <laughs> Um, not that available. Would you like a boyfriend? Or do I like you think having. It interferes I like with being things? in a relationship. Yeah, it definitely interferes with things. I can't concentrate on my work very well, mm. which is um, quite annoying for my manager and people like that. And when you're in love, do you just t tell them to cancel everything so you can go off and be romantic? I normally end up cancelling everything. What's the most romantic thing that's happened to you? Um, I did have a very romantic, uh, like, two-week trip through Italy and going on the Orient Express and all of that. That was that very must romantic. be gorgeous. Mm. That must be so nice. It's been so lovely to talk to you, as usual, even though... Wouldn't you tell me anything. Yeah, we didn't get any filth, which I was rather hoping. Sorry. Was rather hoping to know which was the biggest bit of Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to 
got a special challenge for you today. I don't know what it Here is, but do. Zag's got it all figured well, out. Christopher, I'm sorry to bring it up like this, but even though, Bob, <laughs> Bob, you may be famous for your unbelievable musical talent, yeah. your generosity of nature, mm. your family values, and hey. your superstar lifestyle. Just check that. Just but unfortunately... No, no, I'll send a fax. Okay. <laughs> Chris, but unfortunately, Bob is not famous for personal hygiene. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be the one that says it. But... <laughs> <laughs> he can hypnotise you with his armpit. It's amazing. No more. But um, having just come back into Australia and, and seen the charts and seen that everyone just has so much passion and, and love for In Excess again, it's it's fantastic. People sort of debating about how dramatised it was. Mm -hmm. um, they had that scene where. Michael, apparently, whatever he said to you the first time, was that in any way accurate? It's almost exactly correct. There you go. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was uh, an urban myth that Suicide Blonde was inspired by you, or you had some involvement in it? Um, yeah, because I had just, I'd filmed The Delinquents, and the girl who had done my, hair, uh, my makeup and, and the wigs in that film, there was one uh, peroxide blonde. There's a scene in the film where she dyes her hair and, and so she made me familiar with the term suicide blonde. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> um, and one of the, the nicest scenes, which is a sad thing for, for your character in the, in the show, but mm. when the split, up, split happens and mm. they basically say that one of Michael's charms was that he remained friends with his exes, which mm. I read elsewhere um, that you had um, dinner with Paula and Michael later on. So it's nice. Yeah. Uh, look, a guy with that much charisma, it doesn't just switch off. You don't just forget about that person. Um, I mean, I don't know what what it was like with other women in his life, but, you know, my love for him remains, and um, it's just good that everyone else's love has been reinvigorated with, with, this, uh, with this show. Now, um... A lot of uh, people have asked me about uh, your washing. Have you washed recently? Um, well, I didn't even have time for makeup because, like, you know, there was something wrong with the satellite, um, and that would usually disguise my normal filth. I don't usually stink, you know. Now, you're wearing this. He's the sexiest man on earth.
she a love goddess. Um, <laughs> what have you been doing? Lots of exercises, or do you starve yourself secretly? No, no. Um, I haven't actually been to the gym in a long time. They're going to yell at me when I go back there. Um, no, just just haven't had time. Just been flying around and working and. So when you're jet lagged, you don't sort of feel like eating because it's the wrong hours that you should be Do eating. Do you get upset when you see a fat picture of yourself? No. 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 I think it's, you know, it's uh, up to me what I do about that. But I'm not really bothered by it. As long as I feel fit and healthy, then I feel good. And whatever anybody else thinks about it, I really don't care. Now, do you have a boyfriend at the moment? I'm dating. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and who is I'm dating it? someone. I'm going to get all nervous here. I'm, I don't know if I should say. It's just all oh, new. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's strictly entre nous. <laughs> you mentioned all your secrets on the bed here, right? Yeah. Um, I, well, it's just kind of fresh. We just started dating. But he's in Australia, unfortunately. So. Uh, is it Michael Hutchins? No. <laughs> Soap number one is Johnson's Baby Soap, oh. the softest, mildest oh. soap for baby's bodies. Oh. Now with added moisturiser. Mm. Oh, on your bottom, Bob. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Wash your hands properly. It's his show. He can do what he likes. Is it Michael Hutchins? No. <laughs> I thought you were just trying to keep quiet in case Kylie, you know, was watching and, and it all came out. You were double dating. No, no, it's, it's not Michael. No, he's in Italy at the moment. It's who, who... Oh, come on, Danny, give us some oh, girl talk. He's, well, I'll give you a clip, but it's already been in the papers anyway. Um, Are you still playing hard to get? No, no, um, I don't play hard to get. I, I go after the boys. Do you? Yeah. But do you sleep with them on the first date? <laughs> <laughs> Depends. <laughs> well, Paula, a first date. How far should a girl go on a first date? Nowhere. Nowhere, nowhere. No, that's my advice. Why, well, am I suddenly Marge Proops here? I don't think anyone should go anywhere on a first date. Why do you? Well, I mean, you know, like, far in... I know what you meant, Terry. Yeah. I, um, yes, listen, no, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk to, uh, but, to Henry about But Henry about there. romance. Yeah. yeah. Well, you haven't actually got a valentine at the moment, have you? What's that, like a sweetheart? A girlfriend, yes. Nah. So there you are, girls, he's scouting tonight. <laughs> all right. Listen, now we're Look at them all lining up. <laughs> Not. But do you sleep with them on the first date? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> Very me. <laughs> all a bit much for breakfast television, I think. Well, I think it's a bit... Well, I don't know. I don't know whether you should be holding out and keeping your feminine mystery for a long time. But it's quite Australian. I think lots of people imagine Australian girls are much stronger and they do go after boys and sort of... I think they have to be, go the it. guys are a bit rugged in Australia. Well, I think they're actually far from it in Australia. Really? Yeah. yeah. Who have you been out, out with that's uh, Australian? Who's vibing that with Australia? <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Are you saying well, Michael? We'll, we'll discuss that. Um, I'll be giving uh, Danny a little bit of uh, advice in a minute. <laughs> but for now, we're going to go to our daily dose of romance, real romance. Not this sort of giggling stuff. It is, of course, Cupid's Arrow. You were saying earlier on that in Australia um, the music is more important than image and in England mm. everyone's very concerned about your trousers. Mm. I'm not your surprised trousers, yeah. actually looking at those. But um, do you find that's happening to you a lot? Mm. Yeah, well people sort of looking and say, well, you know, you have to dress a certain way to play a certain music. You, you know, it but happens what? all over the place. I don't know. We're not really concerned. We're just concerned with our music. And how would you describe Comfortably it? Comfortably we dress. Comfortably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they look a little tight to me. Now, um, how would you describe the music? Uh, uh, r rock music. Now, in all the, um, the polls that I was reading in Countdown magazine, mm. Mm, yeah. you know, when it came to Sexiest Man, mm. you won. Is there a category for that? Yeah. Man? Sexiest Man. I don't man. read them. Now, what, what about Paul win? Mel Gibson? What's he now? Oh, Mel, yeah, he's, you know. Just forget yeah, it, eh? Forget it, yeah. Oh, 
I'm really yeah. sad. Now we're now going to turn from all that, and we've hit all the high points in that conversation, back to Jules and Robbie. I hope. Could be. Oh, they're already queuing up outside for days. <laughs> Seriously, worry. It's dangerous to say that lying on a bed. It is a bit because I might try and snog you now. <laughs> now, um, now, uh, which, what sort of boys do you like? Um, I like guys that are a bit mysterious. I don't like guys that come running after me. I like to chase them. Why though? Um, I don't. I don't know. I guess um, it's to feel sort of like you're in control of everything. Do you think lots of men are quite intimidated by you? I think some are. Yeah, but they're wimps, eh? They're just the wimpy ones. Now, what are you doing this Christmas? Um, going back to Australia, um, meeting up with my date and um, <laughs> my family and just Come on, lying on the beach. Is he famous? Yes. He's famous and he's Australian? Yes. It's either Michael Hutchins or Rolf Harris. Come on, who is it? <laughs> you got it. It is Rolf. It's I, Rolf. I know. I it's Rolf. You heard this for the first time on this show. <laughs> yes. And, and then, are you going to be with your parents? Yeah. Do yeah. you do lots of talking about your careers when you're at home at Christmas? It must no. Be a bit desperate. No. There's kind of sort of an unwritten law that when we walk in the door at home, that there's no talk about work. Just so it's our like little private place where we can relax and forget about everything. What does your brother do? He's a cameraman, actually, at one of the, the TV stations. And, and he's coming he's over here next well. year. My brother is beautiful, and he's, he's coming over here next year, so girls, watch out. Oh, God. <laughs> this place is not going to be safe from my nose. Well, no. it's been so gorgeous to talk to you. Thank you. We wish you the best of luck with all your clothes and your new single mm -hmm. and everything else and your stupid date you won't tell us about. <laughs> Kylie, hello. We long to see you on this bed for more in-depth probing. And now... <laughs> Do you really think he was God's gift to women? Um, I don't think he was God's gift to every woman. I think he probably would have given quite a few women just a bit of stress. You know, a few grey hairs, but, uh, yeah, he was just a, a, so kind, so good, and so bad. You know, that's what you want. A bit of wickedness. A bit of everything. But you found him the sexiest man on earth, you said. Yeah, I did. But then I would, wouldn't I? Into you raise a glass for everyone. At that time, Paula Yates was in a miserable marriage to one of the most famous men in the world. Bob Geldof's Live Aid concerts for African famine victims had made him a saint in the eyes of the Brits. I was perceived as being the woman who dared to leave St. Bob. And uh, that's quite a sin in this country. And and in this country, that 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 certainly was perceived um, as quite a sin, because people couldn't believe. Uh, not only had I left St. Bob, but but for an Australian kind of, you know, rock, rock god. Was Geldof envious of Michael the rock star? It must be hard to be doing pubs when somebody else is doing stadiums. Or was it a man fighting to get his wife back? Initially, yeah. But, yeah. It got a lot rougher than that. Yeah. It was terrible. It was just unimaginable. Uh, my missus left me. I was in love with her. And um, uh, I was destroyed by all of that and um, you know if, if it's happened to you if you're listening to this and it's happened to you then you'll understand what goes on you're consumed with this sort of universe of grief and it so crowds your head that you can't find any way around it or it broke my heart when he died it just broke my heart it really did it's, it's a terrible thing you know uh, I did. I, I spent so long waiting for him, and it's like when he died, I, I now have to spend so long waiting for him again. Instead of joining Michael on tour in Australia, Paula came to Sydney for his funeral. Michael had been found hanged with a leather belt in a Sydney hotel room. 
Paula's last embrace was on a visit to the mall. I was just amazed how uh, cold he was. Couldn't believe it. And then I made the, the people at the, the morgue, they, they sent out for a duvet for me. And uh, we got a, a blanket, a duvet, and wrapped him up, tucked him in. Stupid, isn't it? It's kind of stupid, you know, he's dead. But, you know, I never thought that it would end, you know. He was the great love gone. Yeah, he was the great love gone, and he was just a, a beautiful, beautiful boy, you know.